CSS has come a really long way, but I still use SAS in a lot of my projects. And today I wanna to look at one of the reasons that I do. And so what we're going to do is look at how we can create a color theme mix-in that's also going to include an if else statement that gives it an extra little superpower. Hello, my friend and friends. I'm so glad you've come to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin and I'm here to help you fall in love with CSS. And if I can't get you to fall in love with it, I'm hoping to at least help you be a little bit less frustrated by it. And today we're going to be going and looking at a different way we can author our CSS by using a little bit of SAS. So let's jump right into it. And you can see I've set things up a little bit here. And I just wanna say that these properties that I've set here, these variables I should be saying, uh, these could be custom properties and custom properties and SAS actually do play very well together. But in this case, I'm just leaving them as variables. And if you've never seen even SAS variables before, they're just a way to sort of save things. And you can see I've set up a few other things. We're going to come back to this in a minute. Now, don't worry too much about what we're seeing here. Um, but the basic idea of what I want to be able to do is to come here and be able to set a background color. And let's say that's my primary uh, color primary. And when I set my color primary, well, the background's a little bit dark, so then I'd probably be coming in and setting a color, which is going to be my color neutral light. And then it should change it to there. And then we'll just copy this, paste it down here, make this one the dark, and make this one my secondary. And so anytime, basically, secondary, we gotta spell things properly. And basically anytime I, you know, this could be one simple color theme here, and then this could be another nice simple color theme down there. And what I'd like to be able to do with these is just to have that happen automatically. So we can create a mix-in for that. So I'm gonna do that at mix-in, and we can give it a name, and I'm just gonna call it color scheme. And we're going to give it two arguments, but basically let's just grab this to start with and put it in this mix-in. And we're gonna delete you, and we're gonna delete this one here. And what the mix in here right now is doing is if I wanted to use it, I can come here and say at include color scheme, and it's going to apply that color scheme there. So it's applying the background color of primary, which is this one here, and then my color neutral light, which is this one right here, and you can see that it's working. This isn't a very useful mix in though, because we can't change what it's doing. If I want to use it again, well, it's going to do the exact same thing every time I use it, which is kind of not the best. So we can step the game up on this one a little bit by coming here and giving it arguments that it can accept. So I'm gonna give it a text argument and a background argument, BG. And then I don't want to set necessarily what it's going to be here, but I'm gonna say that my text should be this one right here. My text will get put here and my background will get set right here. And so we can say background like that. And so if I come down here and I do add include, color scheme and then I could even say my text is going to be yellow and my background is going to be black and it's going to set the two of them right there and let's just try that again here we could come and say now in include color scheme and then we could say uh, purple and I don't know EF 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 just you know throw a couple colors in there it's a very light gray it barely changed but it has changed and so we could create our own very simple color schemes here but what I've done up here is I've actually created two color schemes, uh, or three color schemes, I should say. I've created my scheme default, my scheme secondary, and then a, a scheme accent gradient. And we're gonna get to this one a little bit later because we're gonna have to play around with stuff to get this one to work. But for these two, you can see I've set, this is what I want my light text color with my primary, and I want my neutral dark with my secondary color. And so to be able to do that, there is a gotcha on this because let's come here and on this one, if I came here and I just say scheme secondary, it's not actually going to work or scheme primary. They're not actually working. Or of course that's not scheme primary. I called it scheme default. So we're getting an error. Let's go with scheme default. So you have the right one, but it's still not going to work. <laughs> um, and the reason it's not working is because you can actually see here, we're missing an argument for background. And this is in code pen that it's, this is jumping up. And that's because right now we've only supplied it with one argument. We're giving it one thing, scheme default, and we haven't actually declared anything for the background here. And so let's just come here and write red so things compile and change. And the background will change. The text color is not actually changing though, because it's going, well, we're giving it two different colors for there. And so, you know, if I did this as black, it just all will look black. The text color was not going to change now because this is an invalid property. And to really show you that that's happening in code pen, we can come and go to view compiled CSS. And if we find that one, you see color and it's listing out the two colors that we have here. That's a problem. We don't want that to happen, obviously. And there is a way to fix that. 
when you have a variable that has multiple different pieces to it, uh, this is called a list. And when we want to bring a list in here, but actually say that this isn't one argument, it should act as multiple arguments, we can do that. And this is, it's an arbitrary number of arguments. We can put three dots here. And by putting those three dots there, you can see it actually works now. And what it's saying is, okay, I know that this scheme default is actually going to contain multiple things. So I'm going to apply this one to the first, and I'm going to apply this one to the second one. And if there was a third, it could be applied as a third argument and so on and so forth. So here we can take this scheme default and let's go down here and then we can do scheme secondary. And there you go. You can see that it's working perfectly fine. So that's already a nice start. But what if I wanted to use my scheme accent gradient? Well, that's actually going to break things again. So let's come and bring that in, put the dot, 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 because we have multiple different things coming in. And you can see the background has gone to white. There's no errors. So let's go and see what's actually happened. So view compiled CSS. And my background color is getting set to three properties. Huh, that's annoying. Why is that happening? Well, if we come and look at my scheme accent gradient, we have my neutral dark for the dark color. And then I have this complex gradient. And my complex gradient is over here. And this might seem like overkill these like uh, variables is, you know, referencing other variables, referencing other variables. But as you build out more complex systems, this can actually be really, really handy. Um, and it's sort of a tokenization of things that can be really useful. Um, so this complex gradient is giving it three different values and that doesn't work for a background color. I want that for a background gradient. So how can we do that? Well, that's where the if else statement can come in. So we want to come here and what we basically want to say is if, if we have, if we have a single BG color, then set a background color. And if we have multiple BG colors, set a gradient. So how can we do that? Well, luckily we can do if else statements, as I said. So we can do an add if, and then we want to say, how can we look for how long something is? Well, to be able to do that in SAS, I'm going to come all the way up to the top of my file and I'm going to do an at use and my at use is going to be SAS colon list. And what this is doing is SAS has a whole bunch of built in modules that are included in it, but we can't use them unless we bring them into the file that we're currently working on. So by starting it with the SAS and putting the colon, I'm saying I'm using one of the built in SAS modules and then I just happen to be using the list module. And the list module opens up a whole bunch of doors. You can do lots of stuff with it. But in this case, what I want to do is if list dot length. And so here I'm saying I'm using the length is a function and all the modules just include a whole bunch of functions. That's all the things it can do. So I'm going to say I want the length function that is part of my list module. And I want to say my BG. So list length BG. If it's equal to one, well, then I want to set a background color. And so that's what we have here. But then if we have multiple colors, we want to set a gradient. So then we can come here and say else. And I mean, else this could be, you could do an if else again for more than one <laughs> rather than uh, is equal to one. And this is two equal signs. It just this font makes it look like one big one. Um, I'm assuming that you wouldn't have zero background colors. Um, so that's, you know, I think it's going to be safe enough to use here. And so here then we can do a background image and do my linear gradient. Gradient, I have to say two, two top left. And then we could put in my BG here. And there, it's fixed it. And you can see that it's actually working now. And so that, and that's because the BG here, it can pull in all those colors. And in this case, it's actually okay that it pulls in the three of them and it just comma separates them because that actually works with what we have here. So it's not going to cause any issues. And as you can see, the gradient is working and you could actually, you know, let's come in and make a color scheme accent gradient. We could also have a simple gradient. And then, so we have complex gradient. Then this is my simple gradient because we do have one there. And then let's come and change this one to scheme simple gradient, which will look very similar but we should see it has changed over and then we get my simple gradient coming in. And of course you could even come in here and do your own just like we had before, where I could say that we're gonna do black, white, yellow, purple. It won't look very nice, but we'll have black text and then a white to yellow to purple. Oh, except that doesn't work. And that's because what this is doing is it's applying multiple arguments. We are only accepting text and background. And now it's saying, well, we have text, we have background, and I don't know what these are supposed to be, so I can't use them. 
Another interesting thing with mix-ins though, when you're doing this, is you could actually take all of this, wrap them around in their own set of parentheses, and then it works. Uh, so I don't know oh, the whites in the bottom corner yellow in the middle up to the purple on the side So you could come in and create your own color scheme with this as well And if we'd bring this all the way down to just being a purple it will still work but set it as a background color rather than being the gradient and yeah, A nice little robust mix-in that we can create there using if and else statements And this type of thing is part of what I'm going to be covering in my new course beyond CSS where we are going to deep dive SAS and here's an example of what the portal uh, will look like and fun things with it are these interactive code blocks so I can actually come in here and change this number hit save and actually see what it compiles out to on this side so we can see the SAS here and the compiled CSS on this side there's a lot of text in the course uh, there's also videos the videos can even be searched so if I look here for the, the word parent it shows up on the timeline every time I said the word parent in this video um, as a quick example of that so yeah, this is something that I'm working on. It's not only going to be going into SAS, but it's gonna look heavily at SAS, how we can use it to create scalable CSS. We're gonna look at post CSS as well. We're gonna look at build tools. We're also gonna be looking at design systems and even more than just that. So if you'd like more information, there is a link just down below where you can find more about that. And with that, I wanna say a very big thank you to my supporters of awesome, Jan, Johnny, Stuart, Tim, and Doug, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.